Hey guys, I'm back with another video. So in this video here, I am going to be doing a uh, review here on the IP616. This is the, one of the latest X tool scan tools, and it aligns itself with the D7 and the A30M. So basically, we need to go over the differences between this and those other two scan tools that's pretty much in the same range. So you should see a graphic up on the screen by now. So first of all, let's start with price. The uh, IP616, I'm just calling it IP from now on. IP is a little bit cheaper than the D7. Now, obviously, the A30M is going to be the cheapest one because it has, uh, it, you got to bring your own device. Uh, discounts available, yes. And if you look in the link, uh, if you look in the description, I have a link for 10% off the IP and 8% off the D7 and the A30M. However, right now, I do know there's a $30 code, I believe, for the IP616 and uh, the coupon is stackable with the discount. So look in the description, use my code, use my link and you'll get a discount. For us free updates, the IP has lifetime updates, but it's limited, meaning that it's not limited to getting the update per se, but it's more like limited in the number of sales, meaning like for now, whoever buys the unit will get lifetime updates after a while it will shift to a few years, like two to three years updates. Um, D7 has three years free updates and A30M has lifetime. As far as battery wise, um, th th um, they're pretty similar. And again, A30M is pretty much gonna be on a device that you bring. Uh, only one that can do CAN FD protocol is IP. As you can see, the number of special functions IP has the most number of uh, special functions. D7 coming in second and A30M coming in third. Uh, bidirectional controls. Now, this is important. The IP does not have any bidirectional controls, but the D7 and the A30M do have bidirectional controls. Uh, Vehicle-specific function, only when it has some vehicle-specific function is the D7. And these vehicle functions are things like zero point calibration for like Toyota and Volvo vehicles. All right. And far as key programming, IP and D7 both support key programming and also some of X2 key programming uh, modules, while the A30M does not. So those are the major differences between the units. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna unbox it now. Let me move my light out of the way. That was just there to hold that up. Let's go ahead and unbox it. I mean, it's gonna be pretty much what you'd expect. You're gonna pull a blow motor case out. All right. One thing I do like about um, X-Tool um, blow motor cases is that they feel, not only feel pretty good, but they come with, um, with nice hinges on them that feel like they could last a while. All right, so when you open it up, you're greeted here with a package and um, you put that there. All the cords, I don't need to pull this out. We all know what it is. It's just a USB cord. That's the OBD2 cord. And these are the type of um, um, things that you would use to plug it into the wall, which for charging purposes. And then we open this up here. Uh, we are going to have the unit right here so this here is a unit and um and, and this is in a little bit more landscape orientation again i do not have a d7 to compare this to but i have a d8 maybe one day i do i will do, be doing a d a d8 comparison to this and um I don't know exactly what version of Android it has on it, but I think that this might has a slightly newer version of Android on it. So with that said, um, let me see if the battery charge up any. We'll go ahead and see if I can cut it on real quick, see if we can get a little splash screen start up here. And then once this splash screen finishes here, we're gonna go ahead and jump in the vehicle. I'm gonna go through all the special functions on my 2010 Buick LaCrosse, and I'm going to um, see how much live data this thing has. I'm sure it, ha it has tons of live data, I do know that. And just how fast it operates and how, um, you know, how it feels to the, you know, to the hand when you're actually using it. So there it is, it's firing up now. And um, 
well, I'm going to go ahead and skip this part here because we got to do the activate here. I can't activate this here on camera, but what I can do is that I'm going to come back with it and we're going to go in the vehicle and take a look. So see you guys in a few minutes. Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video. So in this video here, we're going to talk about the X2 IP616. This is the uh, latest, one of the latest versions of the X2 line. I've already, in the first part of the video, went through the unboxing it shows you the form factor it's more in landscape mode now so let's take a look at some of the features in the unit first of all we're going to go through the special functions there's 31 special functions here we're going to roll scroll through these so you can see what exactly they have to offer i mean again this is pretty good all right, for these types of special functions, all right, for this number, right? So now let's go to auto scan and let's go ahead and do initialize, let this initialize. And what I'll do during the auto scan, I'm just going to fast forward the video to get through that pretty quickly because again sometimes the x tool it's not pretty fast and it's not really slow but it does take a few minutes to do it so i'm just gonna just um just fast forward this part of the video right here All right, the scan is done, and we can see that um, there's um, some, you know, it gives you, it, it just gives you a, a a quick snapshot, tell you if there are any failures, tell you if it's normal, no DTC, and again, in the car, I, I know my car and I know it quite well. I mean, all these failures pretty much mean mean nothing. It's just. Um, it's, communication issues where it didn't communicate fast i mean it's a 2010 so if you've got an older car and see a bunch of failures in different modules likely it means not much at all so now let's go ahead into the engine control module and take a look here three six two wheel front drive and now <clears throat> this is where again i was talking about the bi-directional controls here normally in this screen here you would just like you see a square for read ecu data a square for live, live data you would see a, normally you would see a button here for actuations and you would see a button for special functions now just to talk very briefly about bi-directional controls and um, most people may argue if you bought a scan tool you know in this price range you would expect bi-directional bi-directional controls and yes i totally agree with you but the way i look at it is that most of the time if you make a diagnosis particular as a diy live data is going to be more of what you're going to use and yes i've used the bi-directional control to diagnose a p042 P0420 to look, you know, to, you know, to, to actuate the parasolenoid valve, my EVAP canister vent valve, to pull a vacuum on the system. Yes. And, but however, that's about, and a few other times I've used, but most of the time we're taking a look at live data 
and that sort of thing to make a decision on how to diagnose what it is. So in other words, this is a very capable scan tool, despite the fact that it does not have um, uh, bidirectional controls. So let me see what to see what we got here. What, what kind of trouble code I got in my um, thing? A P zero. This right here doesn't it said um, P P zero seven zero zero. Yeah, this is um, again. I've been messing around my car this morning. It's probably here is nothing, so I'm not going to worry about that. Um, it just clicked a little button here to see what happens. It takes you to a screen from adequately changing gears. Yeah, no, this is this is fine. Yeah, this is just um, again. I think that again when I had um, a um, you know, I, I've just been messing around with my car this morning. All right, so and I and I'll take a look at that much later on. So anyway, what I want to get to is the live data. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and start my engine up here. We're gonna take a look at some live data. All right. So the live data, uh, we, I mean, look, I mean, you have a plethora of. I mean, you got all the live data you need. This is just in the engine module, by the way. So what we're gonna do? Let's just take a look at the um, what people might look at something like fuel trims, for example. Let's take a look at that. All right. Let's see. I know they're here. And uh, oh, oh, ox let's just go oxygen sensor data. And then we're going to hit uh, custom. And then that's going to pull up. And then, as you can see, I can see my actual values fluctuating for the bank one sensor here makes sense. And the bank two sensors are pretty stable. That make total sense. But if we hit com uh, display all, we'll hit combine, it puts them all on a graph and color codes them so you can see what is exactly happening. So this here is, uh, as you can see, you probably can, uh, let's see, this we're going to expand and make this a little bit bigger here so we can see. And so you, as you can see that, that the, that the uh, <clears throat> bank two sensors are pretty steady and the bank one sensors are fluctuating up and down and that's you know again I'm, I'm pretty sure this I can optimize this graph to make this a little bit more pronounced but that's kind of what you want to see in a situation like this and and so yeah let's just hit exit here and we will hit back all right and we will hit back again and so now we're back to um, you can go to fuel trim data misfire data so these are all the things that again that that really allow you to really see right here um, you can see all your data here you can even graph the data so let's just take a look at these here graphs and hit custom and we can see and then if we just hit um, combine you can see all the data right here of your fuel trims and it's color coded and you got your little scale over here on the Y axis and time on the X axis. So therefore, um, this is uh, pretty, pretty cool that you can actually get this visualization here. All right, so let's go back. All right, so that's a little bit of live data. Um, we can also, well, one thing I'm interested in, let's go back to the uh, transmission module. Because again, one thing, uh, let's go here, hit diagnose, Great trouble code, there's no, there's nothing in the TCM. So it's like, again, that, that, that's like a ghost code. I think it called it earlier because my, my check engine light is not on. I think it's some kind of way called it earlier because I was messing around with some stuff in my car, some communication and probably just for a brief second, it lost some type of communication. <laughs> but what I want to show you, what I want to see is here is the uh, transmission data. I mean, you got all sorts of data here, so you can make decisions here. So what I want to look at is this transmission. Um, let's see here, the transmission the, the fluid temperature. Yeah, so now this is important right here. Okay, because why this is right here is important is that um, if you look here, because again, if say if you change your transmission fluids, which you should every so often, you need to check it with when it's within a certain temperature. 
and by you can know what temperature that is you can make sure you get your car that temperature then when you check it you can say okay do i need i need to add some more i need to drain some out or it's full where it should be so this is a good 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 uh, another good one here all right and uh let's see what else we got here shift data is pretty good um uh you know for example you want to look at uh gear commands gear ratios solenoid valves to see do you have any pressure um like if your transmission is slipping for example maybe those uh, solenoid valves and the pressure may change in your in your in your um transmission and maybe even the fluid temperature might even get hotter who knows i don't i don't really know that but you can go through all these things about the shift times and things like that so again what i'm trying to show you is that you got so much live data here that you you can't even i mean it would take you all day to go through because pretty much any other body control module anything else you want to go through um if we go here to instrument cluster for example look at live data there's probably not much of anything in here for this uh but again you can see all sorts of things happening if you had a tr if you had trouble with your instrument cluster like say if something wasn't going down right you can come here and look at all this crazy live data that you can get to make decisions with so in other words i'm making an argument that you don't necessarily have to have bi-directional data all the time to have a good scan tool so i think for the price range and not only that the scan tool here um can, uh is compatible with x tools uh, other key uh, programming modules. I have them up on the screen right now. So in other words, if you was in just want, if you was a locksmith or something, just needed a nice scan tool that also had very, very wide range of key programming capabilities, this could be an option. All right. So now let's go ahead and back out of here. I'm going to back out. And now, um, one last thing and then, and then here updates. I mean, I can I can just show you a few things here, like um, in the settings, you can change all of your settings here, like language and things like this. Uh, more, um, you can connect to their tech support remote control. If you click that there, what can happen is that you can, if you, for example, have issues with your car, you can actually tap in. I mean, it actually is, it actually is live. They're ready to connect. You can send this ID and basically you can let them see your scan tool remotely and they can help you with a diagnosis issue as well. So there you have it. There's another. In other words, again, don't again. I'm, again, I'm just making a point that just because it doesn't have bidirectional capabilities doesn't mean it's not a quite capable scan tool. So I just want to take one last look at special functions again just to go through this pretty slow to show you that for example um, you can turn the um, start and stop reset off in some cars uh, key programming I mean it pretty much does uh, key programming for possibly just about any kind of car you can think of pretty insane um, uh, I'm not going to go through all these I'm just going to go through a few of them um, what else is another good one here uh where does it go uh ecu configurations like for example you can actually turn on and off things that are coded into it that you normally don't have these are cars that you can do that with all right so i think that's pretty much it again like i said the scan tool for the price i got an eight percent off coupon it's very very capable um i like the x tool uh interface and again, this here is the IP616. It gets a high recommendation from me. And I'll be back with a comparison video between this, my D8, and my A30M. With that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you got any questions about this X tool, just let me know in the comments. And I'll be sure to answer your question. With that said, you guys take care. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.